Hey you guys, I've been wanting to update the process videos I have covering my painting and coloring techniques for a while now, and since I recently got a new laptop, I decided now would be a good time to give it a shot. To start off, the tablet I currently use is a Wacom Art, and pretty much the only program I ever use is Paint Tool Sci. I'm pretty sure that these techniques can be adapted to other art programs you might be more familiar with, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume you have at least a passing knowledge of how Psy works and the general function of any effect layers I bring up. If you don't, it's no biggie. I'm just not going to be going into much detail about those things. I'll also be referencing the brushes I use throughout the video, so I'll try to show them on screen as they're mentioned, but I'm a huge editing novice, so uh, we'll see. If you want to know exactly what I'm referring to, I'll have a link to those in the description, as well as a link to a transcript for this video and the finished piece. Now, as you can see here, I already have a sketch and some values ready. Personally, I usually don't do anything with values and just go straight to the flats, but for this piece, I wanted to make sure everything was readable before I finalized anything. As an aside, I normally flatten all the lines to one layer, set it to multiply, and then lay the flats underneath it before flattening those together as well, but the here there's an added layer of complexity with the leaves and branches both behind and in front of my character Nara here that I wanted to make sure didn't compromise the overall composition and rendering, so they're staying on separate layers for now so I can manipulate them the way I want. Set the sketch layer to multiply and I start on the flats for Nara. The color I use on the lines will change depending on what flats or palette I intend on using, but I find myself using a dark burgundy color most of the time. I play pretty fast and loose with my flats especially since with the way I color I'll know I'll be going over them again later. Just keep in mind if this is the style you want to work with and this is something I've learned as I've gone, but the, the neater your sketch and your colors the less work you'll have when it's time to render. This is true of pretty much every style, but when you do merged layers and paintings, it can be especially obvious. Of course, I tend to ignore that because rendering is my favorite part of every piece, but you know, do as I say, not as I do. I've tried painting pieces with actual lines instead of just a sketch, and while personally I do prefer the sketch, it does definitely save time when you really want a clean piece. So you know, it's up to you. I really liked the flow of the branches here, so instead of redrawing them, I use a clipping layer to go over them with the colors I want, and mess around with the values a little to make the shapes more distinct before moving on to the leaves. These are a little more refined than the sketch, but again, most of the stuff I know I'm going to mess with while rendering anyway, so I just lay down the rough shapes so that I can move on to the next step of my coloring process. Now when I first started drawing digitally, all of my coloring was done on flats, the multiply and lumosity layers. Now I use almost exclusively overlay layers on top of my flats for two reasons. One, because when adding shading and lighting it looks a lot more natural than the other respective effect layers, and two, because the result has, I, I don't really know how to put it, a slightly different look in the gradients, better contrast. Um, I'll leave a link to one of my older speed paints if you want to see what I mean. But mostly I found that when trying to paint after merging my multiply and lumosity layers, it would tend to come out a little muddier than when using overlays. Uh, I do have a secret though, a deep, dark secret, and it's that I honestly have no idea of what I'm doing. You think I'm joking, but because I'm self-taught, a lot of my grasp on color theory has mostly become instinctive through a lot of trial and error over about five years. You'll find me using a lot of dark as well as primary blue for things like dark shadows, especially on skin, uh, primary blue and cyan, and then bright magenta and orange are great for shading and highlighting hair with red undertones as respectively. Uh, but don't take my word for it. If you learn more from studying the technical side of things, there are a lot of guides on color theory out there. Um, if you're more of a hands-on learner like myself, uh, then experimentation is really is your best friend. Playing around just to see what looks good and what doesn't is honestly half the fun for me when I draw, and has resulted in a lot of surprising interactions that honestly look really fucking cool and different, especially when you don't really intend them. 
I'll usually do at least two separate overlay folders over my flats, both on clipping mode. The first is to lay down any shadows and lighting, and the second usually holds one or two layers that I use to tent the piece, if that makes sense. I don't know how else to explain it. And uh, laying down some more shadows and lights. Unfortunately, my recording wasn't able to catch the pop-up windows Sai gives you for them, but once done with that, I usually also fudge with the hue, saturation, color deepen, and contrast sliders for the entire piece. Or in this case, just for Nara. Again, I really don't know what I'm doing with this or why it works, but I like going through and seeing how the sliders change my colors and values on the extreme ends a lot. Uh, once I'm satisfied, it's time to render. Uh, brushes. For soft painting and blending, I use my V-brush at full opacity. I really like the different painting effects this brush has at different sizes. One technique I love to utilize in my paintings is the concept of vague to specific. I learned this from an art teacher of mine, but the general idea of it is that having parts of your drawing being a little messier, less rendered, or vague will draw the viewer's eye to the parts of a piece you do put more, we more work and detail into. This is why I'll always put a lot of work into rendering the face, hair, and other parts of interest for a piece, and then use slightly bigger brushes for things like clothes and some edges to add that vague quality. One of the most frequent questions I get about my art is how I render hair, and it's actually by utilizing this concept, especially with curly, messy hair like Nara's. Hair is very layered and has a lot going on in terms of colors, values, and shapes. When painting, I'll usually block down colors and blend with the V-brush, and once I'm done, go over in some places with my R-brush. This brush doesn't blend and has a slightly different texture to it, which makes anything I lay down with it really pop against anything softer underneath it. The very specific lines of the R brush contrasted on top of the vague rendering of the V brush will tend to draw your eye to it. Once you get the hang of this technique, it's really easy to start using it in other places too. Um, I'll use my C brush for the same effect as well, though it does blend a little more and is better for details.
And that's pretty much it. I do this all again with some slight variation for the branches and leaves and then once more for the overall piece to make everything sort of gel together. But that stuff is all wash, rinse, and repeat so I'll let the rest of the video speak for itself. I did attempt some sort of a background here but I didn't really like how it was coming out and I didn't feel like trying to fix it so I just scrapped it. If you're still with me, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you found this a little helpful or at least interesting. If you draw anything with this style, I'd actually really love to see it. Just drop a link in the comments or you can post it on Tumblr. I'll have a link to my blog in the desk drawer and you can mention me or submit it to me or something. Um, again, thanks for watching and don't forget your hand stretches.